Okay, I wanted to uh, do a quick video on some of my last connections to the, uh, I wrote a paper on the Orion connection to this sacred mountain in Arizona, the superstitions. So I had some revelations since then, but uh, here in Arizona, I call this the heart of the mountain. Or the heart of the world, according to the ancient Mesoamericans, I believe. So one day I was sitting here and uh, I wound up, um, when I was looking at the uh, mountains, I noticed the, uh, at, in the solstice, summer solstice, it looked like there was two mountains there. And it's the right, you get in the right angle at the summer solstice and this mountain here looks like a pyramid. Well, then you look closer and there's a second one it's right over in here. Uh, so that's what started me off on the, looking then the uh, small pyramid is up in here, or right here. So this is the Orion layout, like the Orion constellation, just like the pyramids of Giza. So I looked for other ones around the world, and sure enough there was another one in China. So there's, so I thought I'd draw a line with Google Earth here. I could, you can draw a line and, and get and get the uh, degrees, azimuth, and distance, and everything. So it was pretty slick. Anyways, if you're wondering how I did that. So I struck a line from here to the pyramids of Giza. North Africa right here. There's the pyramids. Okay. That line there is like 7,300 miles, 7,600 miles, something like that. And it was 33 degrees north azimuth. So, no big deal. Then I've, let's strike a line to uh, the pyramids in China, the pyramids complex. It's in the Orion constellation layout and about 300 miles shorter and then the, the distance to the Giza pyramids but the angle was 33 degrees the opposite direction from north this is true north here so 66 degrees total but it's split to even layout balanced. So that is definitely, in my mind, planned. It wasn't, they didn't uh, build this pyramid over here first in Egypt 4,500 years ago. And then it just happens to have a 33 degree angle layout from this sacred mountain here, which is natural formation, and lay out the same as the Chinese pyramids. So my paper, the point was, is that this is the starting point here. So Mesoamerica, the civilization here in Mesoamerica, probably the Teotihuacanas, and nobody knows who those that people are, were an advanced civilization long ago that knew this, the magic of this mountain, and they knew. When we go due south, it's, it's only off two degrees, on the, and in 4,000 miles, 40, 4,167 miles to be exact, to Easter Island, due south. So somebody that lived in this part of the world is the one that found these points. I, I'm just convinced of that. Why would people from North Africa or Europe, China, be as familiar with this area, the opposite side of the world as, as the people that live here, the big civilizations. So something I just recently discovered though is when you connect these points, these two and the two on this side of the world, uh, you get a tetrahedon triangle inside the globe. Let me pull that up. So here's Superstition Mountains, here's Easter Island. So
So if you see inside here, you see a triangle. So somebody balanced the power out on the Earth. Who did that? I don't know. But how could, how could they calculate the other side of the Earth? One, they knew the Earth was round, apparently. But how did they circumnavigate the globe? I guess Christopher Columbus wasn't the first one to circumnavigate the globe or even go far across the Pacific Ocean, Atlantic Ocean. So that, that myth there is squashed. But somebody laid this out. How would you lay this out? How do you even know how big the Earth is? We have GPS today. I have satellite imagery, Google Earth. I can calculate it. How did they do it? Well, if you take, if you know simple geometry and the golden ratio, which is old mathematics, old technology, the distance from here to here, and they would have known that because they were on the side of the earth. You take this distance, 4,167 miles, and calculate the golden ratio is 1.61 to this here you get about 60, 6,742 miles across this hypotenuse. Or excuse me, this, this angle here, the other leg. So you got 4,100 miles here, 6,700 miles here. And of course Pythagorean theorem is a squared plus b squared equals c squared. The square root of that is this hypotenuse. But Pythagoras was around 200 BC, roughly. It was what nearest, he wasn't around at this time when this was done. Remember, the mainstream says the pyramids of Egypt were built around 2500 BC. So, if that's correct, and I have my doubts about all the aging techniques, but uh, then it was before. Pythagorean even figured his theorem, but you can use three, four, five triangle. If this is three, three feet, that's four feet. This one's five feet. So you can do that relationship, and, and it's the same thing as the Pythagorean theorem. You get 7,925 miles across here, the hypotenuse. The diameter of the Earth is 7,917 and a half miles. So we're only eight miles off. So just by knowing this distance and knowing simple geometry, you can calculate the diameter of Earth. Once you have the diameter of Earth, simple formula to, ch to calculate the circumference is uh, 2 pi r is the circumference of a circle. So you know the radius. You can calculate it, but or you use sacred geometry and and you circle the square and do those simple geometry methods that are ancient, and you could come up with the same thing. You could come up with the circumference. So when you take this diameter and calculate the the circumference of the Earth. Uh, it comes up with 24,899 miles, 0.9 miles. So 24,890 miles. The circumference of the Earth at the equator that we know today is 24,874. So there's a difference of 25.9 miles, 26 miles. So that's pretty darn close. In the history books, the first person to calculate the circumference of the Earth was, was off 3,500 miles. So the circumference, using our radius that we calculated, comes up to about within 25, 26 miles of what, what the circumference is that we know today. So it, it works. So once you know the circumference, the measurements of the Earth, and you're trying to balance this energy, these energy points, uh, and obviously they're circumnavigating the globe. They're they can get around. They can they can navigate 
uh, to the other side of the earth and get to these points. They can calculate them. So they're pretty good navigation abilities. You know, five, six thousand years ago, maybe eight thousand years ago. So, or even some experts think even longer, ten thousand years ago, they think, because of the metal, megalithic structures along the coastlines that are about four hundred feet down in the sea. They uh, they calculate that uh, that's when all this big stonework was done. Uh, so, whatever you want to believe there, I, I, I feel safer just to talk sequence than actual time. But, uh, so, back to, I think the Mesoamerican civilization was the ones that did this. They knew of this power. They shared it with the world. They shared it with the Egyptians or the Sumerians, who were before the Egyptians. And this stuff, this information has been handed down over time. So back to the Earth now. So most of the action is on the side of the Earth. Some believe 13,800 years ago there was a massive comet hit North America and just killed everything. The ice caps melted and flooded it. So there was huge periods of flooding. Happened, another comet hit again in, I think it was 11,800 or 600 BC. And uh, another events of flooding and everything. But so that's a reason they think that there's no large game prey animals up here, predators, no big game. They're in Africa on the other side of the world that's shielded and somewhat protected, but there isn't any over here. Above, you know, above 100 pounds, like big lions, and elephants, and stuff like that. Mammoths died out. Um, and that might be what happened to the civilization, why there's no sign of it. Teotihuacan, they're just finding out how large Teotihuacan is. They're doing LIDAR over the, the jungle, and they're finding out that it's a vast city. Vast. We don't know who even was it there? The Aztecs say it's the land where men become gods, but uh, and they've given all the names to the temples and stuff, so we don't really know. It's pro I, th I think it's the Olmecs. Of my earlier research and writing, I think the Olmecs were the ones that knew about this sacred mountain, and then they were they're the ones that. Uh, there's also legends from Europe, King Arthur's time that uh, his ancestors migrated to Europe from the West. So this, there might have been a great empire civilization on this side of the earth that was possibly destroyed by comets, meteors. Here's a thought for the sequencing is the Sun Pyramid, I say it was built first, it was built to worship. Uh, in the yellow, here's the Sun Pyramid of Teotihuacan in Mexico. The one back here is the Giza Plateau, Khufu's Pyramid in Egypt. So you can see the base is the same, and uh, but it's twice as tall. 75 meters for the Sun Pyramid in Teotihuacan, which matches the basic dimensions of the mountain top, and then somebody doubled it. Somebody made it 146, so they want to make it grander. And I think they found out what energies come from these pyramids. And they, this is a machine. The pyramid in Giza is a machine. So I, th but anyways, I think the sequence is Sun Pyramid to Teotihuacan. Then the Giza Pyramids. Some more connections. The god Hathor, Egyptian god, has horns and a globe in the center here. This is supposed to be the sun or your crown chakra, your energy center above your head. <clears throat> so I think this 
this line right here, these horns are connected to the uh, the layout of this balance. It looks like looks like Taurus, constellation Taurus for one. That's the bull, and I would think somebody would have seen this and think uh, make this connection. They see this and then they want to make this in their own place. They come up with this symbol there. They want, to, they want to capture the magic. Though it's everywhere in Egypt, Hathor. She's also known as the cow goddess. The creator giving birth to people. Here she is again. Different spots. The symbols everywhere. same shape as the layout on the globe. Now on the globe, Easter Island, the natives had a name for Easter Island and they called it the navel of the world. So if this is the navel, the bottom the bottom is uh, the South Pole is about, also this is, remember this is 4,000 miles, 4,100 miles. It's also about 4,000 miles to the South Pole. That's the navel, and this is the heart. Where is the head? Is what I thought. So you go 4,000 miles this way is the North Pole, right on the money. So here's the heart, which is where all the energy comes from in the human body. Most of it, anyways. The most important part the head's up here, the chakra, the crown chakra is in this area. So again the the horn shape and the chakra of the world. That's what they're depicting. Here's the chakra. Here's the heart. Here's the navel. The horns. That's how you talk about this symbol here is the life force energy, supposedly. It's also a, a, a small purse that's carried, I believe. I've shown a lot of pictures of before. It's the life force energy. Here's the cow, which is Hather, another way they depicted it. Here again the horns leaning back. And they lean back in the oldest representations of this. Earlier Greek time, the horns start going forward, the bulls. So this, is, again, is depicting, this is fresh in their mind, this layout of this map of the globe, the balance of the energy. Balance of it, anything was important to the ancients. They understood that. Here's the constellation Taurus. Now this looks like, this may be where this constellation got its name, is the, they knew what the map looked like of this layout of the balance. Down here's Easter Island, and here's the heart, and here's Egypt, and here's China, the Chinese pyramids. This side's even a little bit longer, but on that layout, Egypt is a little bit is a little bit longer this distance, 300 feet or 300 miles. So. If you lane that up where it should be, it'd be in the middle of the Mediterranean. So obviously, you can't build a pyramid complex in the middle of the Mediterranean. It's about 9,000 feet deep where that lays out. I looked at shoreline. Maybe it was it could be built within that 400 feet. Say the sea level is 400 feet less, and that spot was there, but it wasn't. It's deep, deep water. So they went to the next best place. And there's a lot of quartz, on solid quartz in the ground here, and they that, that's where they picked it. They didn't pick it. As a lot of experts say, because it aligned with the constellation Orion and uh, the, you know, this or that reason. And th this is the reason here they laid it out to balance the energy in the Earth. Mediterranean's right here, so they've swung it a little bit farther down, so that's the 300 feet. That's going to 
turn some heads, that information there. So, if civilization is over here on this side of the Earth, they're in control of this area. Are they, how are you going to tell somebody where all these important places are? You're going to record that. You don't have written paper. Uh, you either, if we today tried to make something for the future, people say 10,000 years from now, how do we do that? Our, our paper will disintegrate. We don't write with paper anymore. We write in zeros and ones. It's computer language. Those computers are going to be completely disintegrated. How are we going to give people of the future knowledge about what to be careful of and and what they should be, how they should uh, run, run their lives? So you use these, the stone is one way, or you tell stories about the constellations so that those stories can be handed down through civilization through time and maybe you find areas where you can draw maps that'll stay forever or stay long one place is the is the Nazca lines nobody knows what the Nazca lines were ancient alien astronaut believers say they're alien runways and that kind of thing and people just don't know they, they were found in the 30s because there's they're too big when you're up close to them to really tell what they are so a guy flew over in the 1930s and noticed these so knowing these four locations on the earth Easter Island sacred mountains superstitions China Egypt and a few other megalithic areas you want to map those you want to tell somebody where those are at or how to get to them. So I just start taking a line with Google Earth and running this down the center of these looks like runways and you extend them out far enough sure enough they go right to you say that one there was for Easter Island it goes right to Easter Island ends up right there ends up right there the other ones and they're, they're pretty close too I mean they're really close so it's good enough to point somebody in the right direction here's Angkor Wat in Cambodia big stone structured temple this one here goes to the Chinese pyramids it points right to the Chinese pyramids this one points to Machu Picchu which is a sacred location Anchor Watt again. This one here, it points to China. This one I'm not sure. Yeah. Here, this one points to the Sacred Mountain in Arizona. This one points to the Giza Pyramids. So, are they just writing a map here? Because this is the perfect place, it's flat. When you scrape off, off the uh, top inch of red dirt, there's a white clay underneath there, and it's, it's great to draw, and it lasts. There's no rain here that moves things around. This, these point to the Chinese pyramids, Indonesia, and this one points to Teotihuacan. You can probably find a lot by keep looking. There's a there's a lot of lines here. They may be closer, they may be farther away. Who knows? But Maybe Atlantis is located off of these somewhere, huh? That'd be interesting fun. But again, there's landmarks on this side of the earth. Somebody was a world traveler long ago. Oh, there was Easter Island over here. <clears throat> How long ago is the who and who? We we'll probably never know. Here are some pictures of the Nazca lines.
So they made those, and they're miles long without having a survey instrument. So, but of course, you know, you can hang a string on a rock or a rock on a string and point and line up between stars in the overhead and you can get it straight lines. So I'm an old surveyor, you, you can string quite a ways pretty accurately. So when people say, oh, it's gotta be aliens to get this, because they were flying around, they'd have to fly, they just don't, you don't have to. You can do it with simple tools. Now, traveling in ships, they must have known currents of the ocean and stuff like that. So that's, and that that uh, knowledge was just lost. It's like uh, over time things can be lost because uh, the victors of wars are the ones, their history is, what, is what's carried on. Say today the ISIS is destroying stuff in Sumerian artifacts in Mesopotamia. They're just jackhammering it down. If they keep running through there, they're going to destroy that knowledge and a thousand years from now, nobody will even know what it is. They won't even know about it. They have no idea it even existed because there's a group, a cult, that is destroying stuff. And that happens now. The Catholic Church did it uh, when they first come here in the 1500s. They destroyed the Mayan codexes because they want control. So, a lot's happened in, say, five generations. My great-grandfather was born in the late 1800s, so five generations. We've been from horse back riding to going to the moon and speaking to people on the other side of the earth instantly through the Internet and phones. Imagine going back 8,000 generations. How much can be developed, lost, meteors hit the earth, wipes things out, tsunamis just completely wipe out the coastline, villages, that's where you would live. After the Ice Age, or during the Ice Age, it was dry because you know, there, wasn't, there wasn't the precipitation. So they lived along the coastlines. Uh, that stuff was just wiped out. 8,000 generations is a long time. A lot can happen in 8,000 generations. Apparently somebody was pretty smart to, to know this mathematics. There's mathematics and got to have been a language, a written language. They knew about astronomy, the globe, everything.